Hey everyone, welcome back to another Mattel Jurassic World review. Today we're taking a look at the new Camp Cretaceous Extreme Chompin' Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus fever is back, baby. Every time Mattel releases a Spinosaurus, everyone kind of gets all worked up. And for good reason, we all know the giant debacle that was the Legacy Collection Spinosaurus. And then last year with the Battle Damn Spinosaurus that was exclusive to Walmart, you know, those Walmarts only got like 12 each if that Walmart even got them. And the price of those two figures have skyrocketed on the secondary market. So when this third one was revealed, everyone was kind of freaking out. That's going to be very hard to get. And luckily, that isn't the case. It got a little worrisome in the beginning because the figure started showing up in Canada and outside the U.S. for a couple months. And usually that's not a good sign. But thankfully, that's not the case. This figure over the last week or so has been showing up all across the U.S. It's showing up at Walmart, Target, Entertainment Earth even has it up for pre-order. It's not on Amazon yet, but I'm sure it will be soon. But people got a little nervous uh, at the beginning of the week when it started actually popping into the Target app. And it was selling out in seconds and everyone started getting flashbacks to the Legacy Spino incident. But a uh, quick story of how I got mine today. I got an alert on my phone that the Target near me had some in stock. So I was at work, clicked on it for in-store pickup. And then an hour later, I get a notification that they can't find the item and they had to cancel my order. So on my way home from work, I popped into that Target and there's five of them sitting on the shelf. So whoever was shopping the order had no clue where to look for these. Or maybe they just got recently loaded uh, after the person was looking for my order. I don't know what happened. But I'm super excited to snag this Spinosaurus. It's a nice size figure for 30 bucks, and the paint job is really well done on here. So I can see why a lot of people are excited for this release. And if you haven't tracked one down yet, I'll leave a link to Target's site in the description of this video. As of the time of this review, it's still in stock, but that could change at any moment. But this figure should be pretty easy to find. It's not a retail exclusive. It's gonna be available at all major retails. This figure is part of the main line. So let's just go over the packaging really quick before we crack open this big Sealy boy. Comes in the Camp Cretaceous style packaging that we've been seeing for quite a while now. In the corner right here we have a picture of the Spinosaurus with extreme chomp in action. On the front over here we have a picture of Toro the Conotaurus along with the kids from Camp Cretaceous. Side of the box, same thing, another shot of the kids from the show. And on the back we get a nice picture of the Spinosaurus in all its extreme chomp and glory and then on the bottom right here we have a picture of the old massive biters that have been recently showed up at Target. I actually really haven't seen these two figures much over the last couple months but the last few times I was at Target I've seen both these figures on the shelves that Albertosaurus is really really cool. So enough about the packaging let's crack the Spinosaurus open and take a closer look. So let's start with a nice 360 degree view of this bad boy. This is a pretty good size figure. It barely fits on my turntable. I've always been a fan of this mold. I've always kind of liked the JP3 Spinosaurus design. I know it's not even close to what we know Spinosaurus looks like today, but it's still a cool looking toy. The paint job is really well done on this figure. The main body is cast in this tan color. There's some dark brown airbrushing along the back with some white striping and the sail on his back is done a blood red color with some more of that white markings mixed in and then you also have that blood red for the head with more white markings so yeah it's a pretty good paint job now it's not uh what the spinosaurus looked like in jp3 but it's definitely a much better repaint than that lazy battle damaged spinosaurus all right let's just do a couple quick measurements on this figure this figure is a whopping 22 inches long and just under 10 inches tall to the top of the sail. So the Spinosaurus in JP3 was around 43 feet long. I read some stuff that I wasn't even fully grown. So with those measurements, I'll put this figure in the 124 scale range. So let's zoom in and take a look at some of the finer details on this figure, starting with the head. The head sculpt is a nice homage to the JP3 Spino. You got some crest right here, some nice folds and wrinkles. Here's the nostrils up here. The teeth are nicely painted a off-white color. No sloppy paint on mine. I actually looked at all five copies on the shelves and all five of them were painted really, really nice. You got some of that nice blood red coloration over the head, some of those nice white markings. The eyes painted bright orange and you have a nice slit black pupil on there and then the bottom jaw is cast in an off-white and then opening the mouth up you can see the gum tissue and the tongue is still made out of rubber you get some nice details along the bottom jaw 
and along the top jaw has a nice glossy coat on there to give it that wet look and I think I just jammed did I just jam this thing how did I do there we go I just kind of moved one of the gums out of place and then going down to the neck you can see some nice large scales sculpted in that dark brown paint broken up by that white stripe and then you have this nice tan color for the main body and then going down to the front arms you can see the front arms are sculpted very powerfully i remember the arms on the spino and jp3 were absolutely massive like especially the claws and speaking of the claws the hand claws are not painted they were painted on the original legacy collection one but for some reason mattel got away from painting the claws on the figures it must be a cost cut and measure i really wish they would get back to doing that really kind of ruins the look of the figures by just having the claws the same color as the main body and then going down to the body you can see some nice scale detail in there you can actually kind of make out the ribs a little bit and then this figure is so tall like i can't readjust my camera to take a look at it uh you got more of that white striping and that dark brown paint you can see the sail is nicely sculpted you got all that blood red marking on here with some blotches of that white paint going down to the hind legs hind legs are absolutely huge on this figure a lot of large scales and nice muscle definition and then going down to the feet the feet are absolutely huge on this figure you know when mattel first started the line a lot of their theropods had oversized feet to help with stability and they kind of scale back the feet a little bit but you have to remember this mold has existed since the line first started with mattel so you're still gonna have to deal with these really large feet but the toe claws are painted a very dark gray color and a nice glossy paint and since we have the figure lifted up let's take a look at the scan code on the bottom for those of you that want to scan that into the fax app and then going down to the tail i think whoops zoomed out a little too far going down to the tail you can see some more of that brown paint and nice scale detail obviously it's the same problem that everyone complains about with most of the dinosaur figures in this line the tail is way too short it's been going on for almost three years now and i don't think it's ever going to go away you know i kind of just wish the tails always came on every figure unattached with like you know proportionally you know size tails but it's just what it is and i think we just have to get used to it so enough about that let's go over the articulation and action feature so the action feature on the spinal is pretty simple to activate there's a button on the top of the head right here all you need to do is squeeze it and it'll open its mouth wide with its tongue flailing around and then for the rest of the articulation the head can look up it can look down you could get some nice side the side movement the joints are pretty tight on mine they're just a little bit loose right here like when i start to move it down the head will just drop a little bit but it's really not that bad i've heard some people complain that there's these new spinos are really loose but i guess it's just going to be like your mileage will vary depending on you know which figure you pick up the arms can move forwards and backwards they are on a hinge that allows them to swing out a little bit the hind legs are in a really tight ratchet joint you can hear the big click when you move it you can move back that far locks back in a neutral position and it can move forward a little bit and then going down to the feet the ankles do have some rotation to help with stability and going down to the tail tail can move side to side and up and down and that is it for articulation so let's move on to comparisons all right first up is one of the human figures here it is with dennis nedger you can see the spinosaurus absolutely dwarfs this figure like i said this is a nice sized figure and let's compare it to a vehicle for once since i finally have a jurassic park jeep here it is with the one that came with the dennis nedger escape pack and next up here it is with a savage strike size figure here it is with the battle damage gasosaurus and here it is with the battle damage albertosaurus this is a custom i did a while ago and since i have this figure sitting on the edge of my studio here it is with the new recently reviewed beast of the mesozoic pachyrhinosaurus and this really drives home how big this amazing articulated figure is and next up here it is with the new epic roaring tyrannosaurus rex and i think these two figures scale pretty well with each other the spinosaurus is just a little bit taller uh, I remember when I, back in the day, when I got the Legacy Collection T-Rex, it felt like it was too small to go with the Spinosaurus, and then the thrash and throw was a little bit too big. So this Epic Raw one right here is pretty much the perfect size to scale with the Spinosaurus. 
And you know what? While we're at it, let's do an accurate comparison. Here it is with what we think Spinosaurus looks like as of today. As you can see, Spino has been pretty nerfed lately. It's a quadrupedal animal that lived in uh, swamps, not the big ferocious predator that killed the T-Rex in JP3, and people are still arguing about it to this day. So don't worry, probably in a year or so, this animal will change again. It'll probably have like wings or laser beams or something. And lastly, here it is with all three Spinosaur releases, the infamous Legacy debacle Spinosaurus and the Battle Damage Spino. And as you can see, this new paint scheme is really well done. I still kind of prefer the paint scheme on the Legacy one because it's more accurate to the Spino that we saw in JP3. But man, the paint job on this Battle Damage one was really lazy. It's just, you know, the base plastic color and just this you know yellow mustard coloration over the body and that is it for color and i don't know if you can see it that far back here but the hand claws on this legacy one are painted in i kind of wish that mattel did it for these two releases also so final thoughts on this new spinosaurus i think it's a great toy this mold has been around a while now and now it's finally easy for you to get your hands on i know a lot of people did not want to pay those aftermarket prices on the legacy collection one and the battle damage one now this new one can easily be found for 30 bucks the paint job is really well done on this figure sometimes mattel can be like hit or miss with the paint jobs and they definitely hit it with this one and like i said at the beginning of the review i'll leave a link to target in the description of this video right now target seems to be the easiest place to snag this figure so that would do it for the review. I still have a bunch of the Beast of the Mesozoic Ceratopsians to work on. And I got a whole box of Collect A figures coming in probably any day now. So be on the lookout for those reviews. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and it's greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.